Hey everyone, Chris Stoltz coming at you once again from the Muppet Stuff Museum. We have some great items to show you today from all across the Henson universe. <laughs> First up, we have these amazing Sesame Street headbands. We picked them up from our local Spirit Halloween store. These were made by BioWorld. As you can see, they come in Elmo, Cookie Monster, Oscar the Grouch, and Big Bird. They didn't just have those headbands. They also had hats, shirts, and socks. The socks are part of BioWorld's character collection and come in a variety of characters, including Oscar, Big Bird, Elmo, and Cookie Monster. The socks feature full-length illustrations of the characters. The back of the packaging is cool too, as it has full-length photos of the characters as well. Here we have Big Bird, Oscar, and Elmo. Also from Bio World, and extremely handy these days, is a Sesame Street Cookie Monster hand sanitizer pouch. Bio World says you can show off your favorite character and fill the included one ounce bottle with your favorite soap, lotion, sunscreen, beard oil, or hot sauce. Yes, that's actually what the package says. Beard oil or hot sauce. Hey, keeps it versatile. Some other really cool Sesame products include these two Sesame Street glasses. Although they're not really glass, they're plastic, made to represent glass or look like glass, but they're actually plastic. These are exclusive to FYE. They have like a cool Japanese anime inspired look to them. The Cookie Monster glass has Cookie Monster with, I'm assuming, the Japanese symbol to eat. I'm not quite sure. The back says eat, so maybe that's what it's supposed to be. The Elmo glass has Elmo with, I'm assuming, are the characters for laughing. I'm not sure. The back says laugh. Again, these are Japanese anime sort of inspired glasses. You can find these at FYE. Some other really cool Sesame Street stuff, not new, but vintage, are these Sesame Street 45s. For those that don't know, 45s are a smaller record that contains less songs. These 45s include My Name is David and the Subtraction Blues, Sing and What's the Name of That Song, Doing the Snuffle Upagus and Nobody, and the first few letters of the Sesame Street alphabet. Another really cool thing about these 45s is they are all brand new, factory sealed. It's always a good day when you find mint condition Sesame Street 45s. Speaking of records, these are the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance picture discs. These were Record Store Day exclusives. First up was the Ariel picture disc. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. I'm probably not. Leave a comment down below and correct me with my pronunciation. This one features a Chamberlain and I believe Brea on the front. There's also a few other sexes visible in the background, including the scientist and the emperor. The symbol on the back is essential to Gelfling lore, representing the unity of the seven clans. The second release was this Crystal Chamber Edition. Here you see a Skeksis holding the crystal with Brea, Dee, and Rianne inside. On the back is the floor of the Crystal Chamber. The chamber floor is composed of 18 arcane symbols. The floor in the Skeksis' castle speaks to the first great conjunction of the Urskex. Right here in the center is where the Dark Crystal hovers above this fiery pit. The Urskex, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the Dark Crystal, are the original true forms of both the Skeksis and the Mystics. Yes, they are one and the same. Sadly, Netflix canceled the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, but hopefully we'll get to see what happens between Age of Resistance and the original film at some other point. Speaking of the Henson Company, here we have some cast and crew hats. These hats are from various productions, including the Fraggle Rock Ben Folds 5 Do It Anyway music video. It has an illustration of glasses and Fraggle hair on the front, and the Nerdist logo on the back who helped produce the video. This next hat may be a little TVMA, and I say that because it's from Puppet Up, the more risque version of the Henson Puppets. Puppet Up is the improv comedy troupe that is sometimes known as Stuffed and Unstrung. It was Puppet Up, then Stuffed and Unstrung, then I think it's back to Puppet Up again. On the front, as you can see, is the Puppet Up logo, while the back features the Jim Henson Company logo. This next hat, while not a cast and crew item, this is actually a Disney Parks hat, but it came along with the other hats. It's Kermit, and features Kermit's eyes on the front and an embroidered Kermit signature on the side. Speaking of Kermit, this item is a long time in the making. It's from BioWorld again. 
It's Kermit in his that's none of my business meme pose. Ever since the image of Kermit drinking tea in that Lipton tea ad became a meme, many, many artists have used the image. But to my knowledge, this is the first time Disney has released a licensed item with that image. I don't know what took them so long, but that's none of my business. Well, we showed you some cast and crew items. Now, how about my second favorite Muppet category? UK exclusives. Here we have two Scotty's Muppet Show 25th anniversary tissue boxes. Technically speaking, these aren't UK exclusives. They are international exclusives though because they were only released in Canada. The first box features the familiar Muppet Show curtains. The top features Kermit in his director's chair and Gonzo. The one long side features Kermit, Animal, Fozzie, Gonzo, the Swedish Chef, and Miss Piggy. The other side features Bunsen and Beaker, along with Kermit, Miss Piggy, and Fozzie from The Great Muppet Caper, with images of Statler and Waldorf and Pigs in Space on the sides. The bottom features images of Fozzie, Kermit, and Miss Piggy that you can cut out to make finger puppets. The second box is blue and music themed. The top features Kermit and his banjo and a western dressed Miss Piggy, while the sides feature the electric mayhem and animal. The long sides feature Floyd, Zoot, Janice, Gonzo, and Kermit dressed as Bruce Springsteen, along with group shots of the Electric Mayhem and the Muppets featuring Animal. The bottom of this box also contains images you can cut out to make finger puppets. This time it's Rolf, Gonzo, and Animal. As you can see, Animal is heavily featured on this tissue box. He is on it no less than five times. Rock and roll. Rock and roll! Speaking of 25th anniversary Muppet Show items, here we have a few of the most sought after Muppet collectibles of all time, the Muppet Show busts. This set of highly detailed busts was created by Sideshow Collectibles in the early 2000s. Series one consisted of Bunsen, Beaker, Rolf, and Kermit. Here we have Zoot from series four, which also consisted of Fozzie, Lou Zealand, and Beauregard, and Crazy Harry, who was part of series six, along with Miss Piggy, Dr. Teeth, and Animal. Zoot is an upgrade for me. I had him displayed many years ago out of his box and my cat knocked it over. That's why I love having things mint in the box so much because they don't get broken, right? So this was an upgrade. This is a mint inbox Zoot and I am very happy to upgrade this in the museum. Kermit and Crazy Harry, however, are both brand new to the collection. And this may shock some people, while I just got in Kermit and Crazy Harry, that does not complete my set of busts. Uh, you might be saying, how do you not have all the busts? How does this not complete your set? Well, years ago, I just didn't want to spend the money for them. I thought they were a little too expensive. I thought maybe I could get them cheaper later on. And the busts just got more expensive from there. So when I can get them for a good deal, I will pick them up. As you may know, we're putting together a whole new section of Muppet Baby related items. And we got more Muppet Baby stuff in to put in it. Here we have a 1987 illustrated Muppet Babies Baby Fozzie tray puzzle by Milton Bradley. A 1992 large Baby Miss Piggy plush by Child Guidance, as well as the large Baby Kermit Muppet Babies plush by Child Guidance. Child Guidance released not one, but two different lines of Muppet Babies plush, a large size and a small size. Here we have the small Baby Fozzie plush. Of course, Child Guidance was not the only one to put out Muppet Babies plush. Here we have a 1988 Baby Animal Daredevil plush by Dakin. And we're not done with the Muppet Baby stuff. Next up is this 1989 Muppet Babies gift set from Remco. The set includes a Baby Kermit rattle and Baby Kermit and Baby Miss Piggy squeeze toys. One of the reasons I was so excited to get that gift set is the Baby Kermit squeeze toy. Okay, you're thinking, that's it. He's totally lost it. Why does he care about the Baby Kermit squeeze toy? The reason it's so special is because it's the product that was made from this maquette. This is an original Muppet Babies Baby Kermit maquette that was used to make that toy. This was developed by Craig Yo, who was the creative director of the Henson Company from the late 80s to early 90s. Not only do I have the original maquette, I was fortunate enough to have Craig sign it for me as well. Speaking of Craig Yo, these next items were designed by him as well. While this isn't my first Gonzo plush, it is my first, my first Muppet Gonzo plush. This was part of a line of Muppet plush put out by Direct Connect in 1981. Obviously, this is designed to be a child's first Muppet plush that is not Muppet Babies. And apparently, since Animal keeps making an appearance in this video, we have the My First Muppet 
animal plush. The line also featured Kermit, Miss Piggy, and Fozzie as well. It's not often you can check a grail off your list. And this next item has been on my list for a long, long time. You see them on eBay every once in a while, but not in the condition I want them in. You know, I want them mint in box. So without further ado, here is another grail checked off and added to the museum. This is the EP10 Muppet Babies Casio keyboard. Casio made a couple other Muppet keyboards and I'm looking for those as well. So if anybody has a lead on Casio Muppet keyboards, especially mint in the box, let me know. But wait, we're not done. Surprisingly, that grail is not the headlining item of this video. The headlining item and the reason why I'm wearing this shirt is the Sesame Street Lego playset. If you follow the blog, and I hope you do, you know that we've been pushing for this set for years. It only exists because of Lego's initiative called Lego Ideas. A Muppet fan named Ivan Guerrera put together a proposal for this set. His initial proposal was more of a 1970s, early 80s classic Sesame Street look. It not only included Muppet characters, but humans like Gordon and Susan as well. In order to move forward, each product on Lego Ideas needs 10,000 or more votes. It got the votes and Lego decided to move forward as part of Sesame Street's 50th anniversary celebration. However, they decided to take the more modern look of the street instead of the classic look. There's also a couple other things they've done to stylize the set from the actual show. The first thing you'll notice is that Ernie and Bert are not in the basement where they actually live, but in the penthouse. And you'll notice 123 Sesame Street is actually missing one of its windows. There's also some really cool Easter eggs in the set, including a billboard for Biff and Sully's construction company, artwork in Bert and Ernie's apartment of the pinball number count, the TV in Cookie Monster's apartment is airing a Guy Smiley game show. There's also a picture of his foodie truck and a framed photo of the Count. Of course, there's Bert's paperclip and bottle cap collection, as well as Ernie's rubber ducky. Inside Elmo's apartment, there's a cork board of drawings featuring the Yip Yip Martians, Telly, and Teeny Weeny Super Guy. Ivan has a few other Henson-related Lego ideas that you can vote for as well, which I highly recommend you vote for, and maybe one day too, they can become a reality. And that's going to do it for this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Please follow us on all our social media channels. And we'll see you next time from the Muppet Stuff Museum. That's it. He's totally lost it.